Hey guys, welcome back to the 10-8 fight cast. Today, me and Trevor are talking about Conflict 50. We'll probably touch on some UFC fights and some other bullshit too, but mostly we're here to talk about Conflict 50 taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. We were commentators on the last uh, Conflict show, 49, way back in November. And I think that was titled the, the House That Jeff Grady Built. Yes, yes. We, we, we dubbed that one, the, yeah. the House of Jeff Grady. Yeah. Uh, the 50th show is coming up. It is such a special thing for a promotion to reach 50 shows. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize how many shows really do come and go. Right. Like, it is a brutal business. You think about how long Lamont and Brittany have been doing that Soul Fight Club and how you know, hard they work at it, and there's still only 13 shows there. I know. Like, like, I think, like, Jared and Andrew Stokes, like, promotions, they've done so many of these shows, it's yeah. no wonder that the last time we went, it was like a machine, basically. So smooth. Yeah. And then it was great to see Lamont, like, and Brittany find that gear again, like, at next level, because, right. like, we've seen them get in, in gear, but, like, uh, you know, Fight Force, full steam back in gear. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and MMA's Conflict. back, baby. MMA's back. Yeah. Oof. We've been doing... On average, like a show a month since the new year started. Yeah, it's either been like we've been at a show and I've like to do this, or I've been at a show coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Charleston's a great fight city. Uh, Charleston Muay Thai, uh, probably the most the foremost gym out of that area nowadays. Mm -hmm. But Jeff Grady opting not to have so many fighters on this card in comparison to last time. Don't blame him. Yeah, <laughs> like, a lot of workload. Yeah. Man, I, I, I've like I. God, I love Jeff Grady. He's an absolute workhorse. Built that gym from the ground up. And that dude will show up with just like, I'm happy when I show up with three fighters. And I've seen him show up at tournaments where he brought like like eight or nine women alone to one. And I was like, what the fuck, <laughs> man? Like, way to make me feel like I'm not doing enough. Bro. Or I'll drive like, in like a caravan or like, a yeah, and, 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 or... and like, I mean, that dude works his ass off to be the best. And like, and it shows, like, there's a reason why he's top dog in that city. Yeah. And like, one of the top dogs in the state and on the East Coast. And like, he's doing it every day. And he's doing it every day. And I'm just, follow like, him on Instagram or Facebook, you know that he's... He's like the David Goggins of Muay Thai. That's how I look yeah. at it. Like, I am very relaxed. And I'm like, Jeff, I love how intense you are. You crazy man you he is in there yeah um but he's getting things kicked off there's a full rules and muay thai match to start off conflict and that's Ooh. one of the things that we love about going to a conflict show and commentating it yeah. is that they kind of sprinkle these little yeah. these this, little this nuggets is definitely more in the yeah this yeah, one yeah, is yeah, yeah we did a lot of kb last time we did yeah. some full rules muay thai we did you know and tool obviously had that great um mm -hmm. match in the main event uh, but we're starting things off with some four rules Muay Thai. Yeah. So for those who might not know that haven't seen the show before, Trevor, what does the context full rules Muay Thai mean? So what a lot of people are used to seeing in a lot of these MMA shows is what people call the unified or K1 rule set, right. meaning it's very punch heavy. There's limited clinching, meaning you can only, there's no clinching. You can just grab, knee, and let go. You can't do any real kind of pummeling. You can pull the guard and punch like in boxing, but you can grab, knee, have to let go. There's no sweeping or dumping. There's no elbows at all. Uh, you can catch in a, a kick. In a kickboxing match. In a kickboxing match. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Full rules, you know, elbows. And, and just kickboxing, yeah, no, no dumping, no sweeping, no tossing. If you catch a kick, you can strike, you have to let go, you can't hold. Uh, if you happen to kick the person's leg out, I mean, that counts, but no direct sweeping. Where so for full rules is that the big things to look at that's a big game changer is the clinching from the elbow game. Mm -hmm. it, it is not something that you can just box with. You have to know how to pummel and frame the not get elbowed back, um, as well as looking at in your clinch posture uh, to not get swept. Yeah. Because in Muay Thai, what people forget, like the sweeps count a lot. Uh, in, in Thailand, it can pretty much win your round if you're getting your ass beat. However, in the U.S., they kind of use it as a way, like, let's say if, like, they're dead even on, like, damage, and someone gets a sweep, that person will get the round. Let's say, like, this person gets, like, three or four sweeps, and if they're using that control of the fight, I mean, you can just dominate, because you can use the sweeps to really take people out of the rhythm. Yeah, so I mean... Like, it's, it, it is something to attack, but, however, it's more or less also, like, it's a great score, and it's also a great interruption, because it is a hard reset. There's no, like, kip up, back in action. There is, like, fuck, now I'm down a point, like, almost. Right, and then you yeah. have to get back up. It can make people reckless. The context of the scoring is just completely different. It's a totally different game. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do you wish more promotions would do four rules? Uh, I, like, make it an option. 
Yeah. Like, it because is, there are some it is gyms, one of those like, things. You like, can bet Fernando Hernandez, Jeff Grady's fighter, is ready, oh, for, he's is ready, ready for, for the elbows. elbows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is ready for the elbows. You don't want to rush um, somebody into a situation like that. No, you don't. I'm a big believer in, like, you'll see what I like about a lot of, like, the tournaments. Like, one that I love going to is the IKF, and I work for them as, as like, a judge as well. Um, they have International, which is just punch kick. Right. They have Unify, which is what I just described of, like, the kickboxing you commonly find. They allow modified Muay Thai, which is just without elbows, and they have full rules Muay Thai. So you can have someone get their feet wet in novice brackets of International, Unified, and then even maybe get a novice full rules fight in. Like, mm. you can throw them in, you know, because Lions got to eat, but... Right. Like you can, it's also good to have them do a couple. Like I make my guys do a couple of kickboxing matches before a full rules fight, like a modified like no elbows fight, then before a a full elbow fight. Yeah, because I think it depends a lot on your goals too. Like there are some guys who come to you, especially who are probably like, I want to be a Muay Thai. Fighter, oh, I thought I thought I knew Muay Thai until the first time I got elbowed in right. a fight, and I just went, I don't know shit. <laughs> and then I woke up in a locker room and forgot I was in the military at the time. <laughs> And man, did my game change. So, yeah, it, it's a big eye opener. And and who's he facing? Uh, he is facing John Taylor um, from the Spartan Academy, uh, out of Gibson Saws Gym. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and like the, I don't know much about the striking out of Gibson Saws Gym. I I've seen they've produced grapplers before. I know. Right. I know they. You can probably expect to see from them a more like MMA striking heavy style. Probably a few more angles, uh, which can make a difference. I'll say this. This is also a full rules fight in a cage. It's true. So the, the big evening factor in this is that we have someone coming from an MMA gym that does MMA angles, MMA footwork, MMA in and out. I've seen full rules guys lose the points fight where it turns into an accidental kickboxing match because they can't work properly. They end up chasing that clinch too much or they can't put that person in a corner. Because you elbow best when you can block that person in. And with this being in a cage, that changes a little bit. Jeff Grady's savvy. It's like a home he's, field advantage. It, it is. But Jeff Grady's savvy. Like, he's he's worked, he's had fighters fight in cages before, you know. So he's, he's a bit more, exactly. He is aware of how to use a cage. So I'm right. really interested to see how he's going to get his fighters to find the elbows in this fight. Because you cannot chase a person with elbows. You can't chase a person a couple feet away. With something close to your body, you're gonna get hit. Right. You have to put them in a place, pin them down, and work in tight. And cages don't allow that too too much. So you have to like line them up, punch them in, keep them into the cage, corral them, and it's a bit more work to find elbows on the cage. It's a little bit different. So we'll see who can who can get to the cage and pin them in. We'll see who's gonna be dancing. And it should be. It sounds like they're like trying to front load a little bit of a a little bit of excitement, a little bit of violence for this card. Here, you know, I like it. I like that controls. this is opening. Yeah, exactly. Actually, so right. I, yeah. I skipped that yeah. real quick. I, I I literally missed that looking at the fight card because you said opening is a full rules, and I went, oh, hot damn! Well, yeah, that would be interested. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, normally when we go to these shows, we start off with a kickboxing fight with the youth or whatever the case may be. But this hey, is definitely you want to one start a show off. You get a full rules Muay Thai fight or a kids fight. <laughs> right. Just like, I mean, exactly. not not something that's very ethical. But damn it, is it entertaining, dude? Like, <laughs> there's nothing unethical about this one, in my opinion. This <laughs> no, is a great matchup. These guys, I mean, one and zero versus a two and two. That's not an uncommon seal gap, especially no. when we're talking about kickboxing. It's a lot different. It's a lot yeah. harder to find a, a, a fight like this, specifically a four rules Muay Thai fight in this rule set. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, we're not going to talk about every fight, especially when it comes to this first portion of the card, because a lot of people on it are debuts, and it wouldn't be much. Uh, other than us regurgitating information about their gyms. Right. Because we have a lot of Spartan Academy on this. We have a lot of Battleborn, Black Label Martial Arts. A lot of these gyms, you know, they're bringing more than one fighter. Warrior so. Warehouse is always there. Exactly. Edge is always back. And we've already talked about Jeff Grady. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't really want to just have us regurgitating the same info about their gyms. We will talk a little bit about some fights that interest us. One thing that does interest me in this first series of fights before the intermission is this, uh, how do you say his name, Gabario? Gabriel, Gabriel, oh, man, I said it right earlier, and then he put me on the spot, and I was like, "Oh, Gabriel, yeah, Gabriel yeah, Brown, Gabriel Brown. Uh, five and two, taking on Evan Hayes, five and four. That's a super well-made, the very well-made match. Yeah, the, like, experience as an amateur is yeah. crossing that five fight mark where you really yeah. start to kind of come into your own as a fighter. Yeah, and you were telling me that this guy, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Brown, is, yeah. is is an animal. 
He, I, I, he is a brig shit house of a person. Yeah, and he also always wins like the most interesting haircut award. <laughs> uh, he has like this like thing that just comes down the front. And it's very, uh, it's him though. Oh, um, yes, yeah, I remember this. And, guy, and so actually. he has like a very unique look to him, and it's always like it's also like he's he's very soft spoken though. Yes. Uh, however, he fights like a motherfucker, and he's out of Jimmy Fowler's gym. And uh, those guys are a very experienced MMA heavy, kickboxing heavy, jujitsu heavy gym. So he brings a very interesting fight. And you were telling me that he did one of those strange rule set things, like the Texas boot match, where you're like tied together at the shoe or whatever. Well, what Casey Doxson was doing that video you're telling me about. No, they weren't tied to a shoe. They just punched each other at weigh-ins. Oh, they punched each other at weigh-ins. And I went. I was going Dylan. Sorry, I thought you were telling. Ta- you, I thought you were talking about one did of the Russian. A, did I have another stroke? Like, no. What I, did I tell you? I thought you were talking about one of those, um, you know, like no, no, Russian no. He, uh, where they fight someone, tied, no, no. He, tied uh, together. No, oh gosh, no. I can imagine he might do that, but no. I mean, he would probably um, be down. I saw him. There's a video of him uh, at one of Casey Oxendine's shows. Casey Oxendine was in a boot at the time. Oh, and he was he was, he was calling was them up. to the stage for their weigh-ins and their face-offs. Okay, and he and his opponent got into a fist fight, and poor Casey is stuck on one leg, going, "Oh shit!" Like oh, he couldn't right. break it up, showcase. he couldn't get out of it at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah, a yeah, showcase yeah. fight. Yeah. It was a really yeah. Actually, I remember this guy now. I just looked it up. He fought Billy Jack Cup mm-hmm. uh, when he was two and zero. Oh, yeah, uh, at fight for it, he had that weird. Tap slash no tap type this situation yeah. against BJC. Uh, so yeah, I, as soon as you said that, described the haircut, I remembered him instantly. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, man, he's gotten a lot of fights in since that fight against BJC. Yeah, he's, he's, he was that he's was been busy two yeah. and one. Mm-hmm. He's gotten a bunch of wins since then. He's picked up a ton of wins. Uh, his coming off a loss, I think, against that guy he got in the fight with the weigh-ins. Right? I believe so. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, was that pretty, was yeah. That was. Uh, I don't think that was too long ago. Yeah. In October of last year. Maybe, does that yeah. sound right? Let's ask him yeah. to see how the foot's doing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he was moving around he pretty was moving spryly, pretty good. Yeah, next little yeah. fight club. Uh, but yeah, uh, Gabriel Brown has had some time uh, and some experience since I last saw him. So I'll be super interested. I didn't get to see much of him in that. Uh, Billy Jack Cup fight. I think that actually ended in the first round. round yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty close. One twenty nine into the first round. So I didn't get to see much out of him in that fight. So I'm interested to see a little bit more because he's picked up some wins uh, by by KO. One by de- mostly by decision. So I think he's probably a grappler. Strong grappler. He's a pressure guy. He'll put you in the cage and he'll he'll he punches his way of pe- like putting people in the cage. Yeah. Mm. So and then Evan Hayes. He's out of the training project in St. Mary, Georgia. You ever heard of him? Can't say that I have either, but he's got a good solid record. Here. I saw that. I saw that. Let's see if he's fought. So there, uh, you know, when I when I hear of that, I wonder if that is someone who started a. And it's not a knock, like you know, it might be a garage dojo. He hasn't fought since 2016. It might be a garage dojo or like a group of guys that have some mats in a place somewhere. But I'll tell you what, like, you don't need much to sometimes train for a fight, right? You just sometimes need a couple padded walls. And a couple people, like, you see a lot of people have experience in various things. They get together, and they low-key kind of start their own training thing. And you see that in these small shows. Like, you'll see guys put together. Like, I know there's, like, the ice box on there. It's more about And, and it's the, like these guys um, that get together, and they kind of each have their own specialty, and they kind of make their own fight club. Would you say that it's more about being around the right people than it is about the right equipment? Oh, always. Yeah. I Like, yeah. I have fighters that went on ring control and footwork, but, like, I don't have ever have a boxing ring to use. Like, right. It's, like, you don't need bags to, to win fights. You need gloves, shin guards, and some tie pads. And, like, that's it. Like, yeah. Thailand will show you. You, you just kind of need some dirt to stand on. And pretend. And you have to be able to pretend it's a ring. And pretend it's a ring. That's it. Use your imagination. That gets harder yeah. the more you hit. <laughs> that, I, guess. I put out orange cones. I'm like, yeah, just think the cone's a ring. You're <laughs> <laughs> um, the After the intermission, there were a couple of fights that were interesting to us. I know we talked about uh, this fight. On the last time we did a conflict preview show, and it ended up not happening. Wendy, Wendy Anderson versus Anunson. Amy P- yeah. Anunson Anunson, yeah. versus uh, Amy Peduto from the Charleston Muay Thai team. Yeah, I'm interested in this. Um, Wendy is the wife of the head coach Kelly Anunson. Kelly Anunson is the former ATT wrestling coach. He's a black belt under Hikaru Laborio. He's a former Golden Glove boxer. Um, at that gym, they have Brady Rivera, who fought in a full rules Muay Thai final last uh, Ram Muay Thai show. He's been to Thailand, so they have like a solid Muay Thai background. Um, Wendy is more of like you can't say like the MMA striker. Right. She's got good boxing. She's got some tight kicks, you know. 
Um, and that is a full rules fight. Yeah, it's and that is, and I saw that. Yeah, so she, her debut is a full rules fight. Yeah, um, and then Amy has a lot of fights, and like, dude, Twelve. she like, and and she has the same thing like Cheyenne had, where it's like, like people won't give her the split decision. You know, um, this is one of those fights where I thought it was a kickboxing match, mm. and this is the first that I'm seeing that it's a full rules Muay Thai. Well, fight. it was when she fought Wendy's when it was teammate. first matched up. Yeah, when, yeah. Okay, when she when fought, she fought, when she fought I'm not sure what the original agreement was, mm-hmm. but I know that. When they ended up having the fight with the late yeah. replacement at a different weight, it mm-hmm. was a kickboxing match. Yeah. And this is full rules Muay Thai. And, and so that makes it a totally different fight. I think it's with it a being bigger a, deal for It's a way bigger Andy. deal. If it's a kickboxing match, I could see it definitely going to the distance and it going to a split decision either way. Because of, like, like I'll say this, uh, uh, Wendy has some solid punching power. Like, she punches very well. And depending on what judge you have that night, they'll judge punching or kicking. Mm. With Amy being a great kicker, and she has solid punching as well. Like I'm wondering, she got a great jab, great jab, that's really what improved. I, that's and, what and I really now, noticed about with this last being show. a full rules fight. I'm curious because I know, you know, uh, Wendy is around the right training partners to teach her clinch work, finding elbows, and all that fun stuff. But Amy is way more conditioned to finding those elbows. So And she's doing Muay Thai every single day. Yeah, I, I'm going to be curious to see how that plays on into the fight. Because, man, yeah. with if you start walking into elbows you don't see, you don't want to walk into that space. We do. And then you get stuck in the outside kick range and longer punch range. So I'm curious as to how this fight's going to shift. But that, that full rules definitely has me kind of like leaning towards Amy yeah. bringing the win Same. home in this. And like... I mean, like, if it was a kickboxing match, it's a different fight. You and I do a lot of these shows where a kickboxer, or sorry, an MMA fighter moves over to kickboxing Mm -hmm. and fights somebody who's like 5 and 3 or 5 and 4 as an O and O kickboxer, but like a 5 and 1 guy in MMA or whatever the case may be. And there's only one guy I've ever seen go and do that and win, and it was Billy Jack Cup, who fought an opponent with a losing record. Mm-hmm. Every time I've seen somebody step over and try to fight somebody who's actually good at this, I, when I when they I, get fucked up. When I started coaching, I had some guys that did MMA striking and right. were told it was Muay Thai, and I went, "Okay." And so, I, I brought in some, and they're like, "You find out like there's a difference between MMA striking and Muay and that's Thai. in yeah, kickboxing yeah. that I'm referring yeah. to. When you're talking about a full rules Muay Thai match, I feel like that you're full Thai giving, one is different. You're only giving more weapons yeah. to the person with more experience in this arena. Where and you, it, it, I feel like this is a, I feel like this is much more favorable to Amy oh, now, yeah, now yeah. than it was previously. Yeah, and and it's like that navigating the full clinch. Well, you elements. know, maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe they asked for that after the last time. But you know, Wendy out. has aspirations to go pro. She, but hey, as I'll an MMA say, fighter, as an MMA fighter, correct. And I'll say this: you have to, as MMA fighters, and you know, like her teammates have been around the right levels and stuff. Like this isn't the first Muay Thai fight they've prepared someone for. Like. I know they have uh, Cameron Sandoval on there, who is an amateur Muay Thai fighter as well. Yeah, we'll be talking about him. And, and, and uh, yeah, so this fight, I'm really curious, you know, because I've seen Wendy fight, and I know that she's made improvements. She's always getting better. And her... You've seen her train. I've seen her fight. Yeah, I've seen her train. just fight. You've and like I say, like, I've seen her like where I'm like, man, for a kickboxing match, that kind of plays well to, to Wendy. Mm. Um, and, you know, so like with this, I'm like, but I know that they've trained her properly. So I feel like this could be a close fight to the very end. Um, however, I could also see like like uh, Amy getting a bit more comfortable with the Muay Thai rule set and moving ahead with it that way. Does that make sense? Yes. But here's the thing. If you want to go pro in MMA, you got to learn how to take a Muay Thai fight. Like Talia Kusinelli will tell you that like, she has great striking. But she's like, man, I fucking hate Muay Thai. And I'm like, yeah, it is a, it, it's a, a tough different fight. Beast. It is a, I, I tell people, man, kickboxing matches aren't fun. You can have fun in an MMA fight sometimes, like. Not always, but like a kickboxing match is tough. There ain't no way out of there. Like then jumping back over to the MMA world, uh, Kevin Nguyen of the Nguyen mixed martial arts family uh, taking on Alex Elliam, who I don't think we've ever commentated for, but I know he's a showcase guy. Yes, um, has a lot of fights on that promotion, and this is another amateur, you know, kind Great of amateur super matchup. well-made matchup yeah. at flyweight of all yeah. divisions, which is. Not we don't get a lot of flyweight MMA yeah. fights around. And what I like about running. Kevin Wynn is that he also has boxing and he kickboxing experience. So good on the last yeah. show. I mean, granted, he was fighting that independent guy Jay Ponder, um, and he made kind of quick work of him as he should have. Yes, but 
even in doing that, he Kevin looks, was coming off a loss from a layoff. Right? Correct. Yeah, I quite that. a long yeah. layoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he looked really good. But now really he's back good. in gear, and he's I'm still excited. a young kid. The Wynn brothers are really fun to watch fight. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that uh, this will be a tougher test for him, though. Alex yes. Elliott, a, a much more proven opponent out of a much more proven gym. He's out of Cody Freeland's gym, and that's the matchup I said that's exciting because um, I believe that kid's record is four and four, or five. what was that kid's record? Uh, it's listed as four and four, but yeah. all of his online stuff says four and three. Okay. So I'm not sure if uh, what I'm seeing online is wrong or uh-huh. if, if the conflict information is wrong. Right. But it, he's got at least seven fights, if not eight fights. Yeah, and, and that's a great matchup. And people that don't know Cody Freeland, um, he's one of those coaches to look out for on this fight scene. He's someone I ran into a long time ago. Really smart guy. Uh, helped train the Scoggin brothers. He's a really, he's a fantastic. MMA coach, and he coaches what he knows very well, and it's one of those like hybrid like Wonder Boy styles and Jimmy Fowler like Revolution styles. Like he's from their same camps of both of them, and he's very educated. He travels all over the world for like the Gamma uh, World MMA tournaments yeah. that like Teenies won and stuff like that. Right. He's usually the head USA coach of that. Mm. So he and he just he's out of UFC Jim Jim, uh, Jim Greenville. So. People will look at that, but you have Cody Freeland out of there, and you also have another fantastic Muay Thai coach out of that gym as well. Um, so, And then uh, Kevin Wynn being out of uh, uh, Black Label with Malachi Friedman and yep. his, his striking experience, and Malachi's Jiu-Jitsu, who's an ATT black belt. Yeah, Man, what, we saw what, a, what a fucking matchup this nice is. Like, I really tell people, like, when you look at like the, the fight, like Cody's fighter, I don't know, but I know Cody. And that's what I like about this. I know what that UFC gym produces. Mm. So you can't sleep on that kind of gym name. Yeah, because a lot of people hear that UFC gym, gym and yeah. they think one thing. Yes. You know? And it is true that there are some of the stuff you hear about places like that. It is true. They, they don't spar. They're not allowed to spar really hard. They're not allowed to roll really hard. It, it, actually, it, all, it, all, it, it, it actually it all depends on the gym owner. Yeah, exactly, yeah. because it's you'll, a franchisee operation. It's a franchisee right. operation, and, like, there are, like, some UFC fit gyms. Like, like, there's a few UFC gyms where it's, like, they'll have some, like, they have a box ring in a cage, and people get down in there. And, like, even me, like, uh, I kind of started my coaching out of, like, an L.A. boxing at one point. Because Mike Perry I, came out of a UFC gym. Yeah, that's right. He well, did. UFC gym Orlando. Yeah, actually, I used to work at that gym for a little <laughs> bit. Like, I took a gig down there because... They offered me this and said I could coach however I wanted to. Shout out to they, my friend Guts who just started training. They kind of like went back on like how they said I could do stuff, and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I pissed some people off by like because I had a few friends that I knew as coaches down there. Like, yeah, we saw like UFC Jim Orlando, then we saw your name, and we're like, what the hell, bro? And I was like, sorry, man, I got bored, and I'm down here coaching. I'm now. everywhere. Like, baby. I'm everywhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I used it as a great experience to like really like level up coach. But yeah, like Cody Freeland, man, he has a great operation there. Um, so that's a really, really exciting a flyweight matchup. bout. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Uh, like one more win for either of these guys, it could be like a title fight for the promotion. I feel you may have seen him on TV refing some of the highest profile fights of all time, if not in the last ten years. Blake Grice bringing some fighters out this time. Yeah, Electric City on the Electric car. MMA, MMA. Yes, he has one fighter, uh, Tanner Chambers. Who's three and one? So he's a little, he's a, you know, a good prospect for them fighting out of Spartanburg SC. I've always wondered why we haven't seen these Electric City guys on the Fight Fork cars because it's right in their backyard. And uh, we we've seen them actually, like we have, like Blake Grice was at the one that I remember, like Anish fought at. Like I saw Blake Grice there. Like he had a kid fighting uh, Dakota. That was in Hickory, though, wasn't it? No, that's oh, no, no, that was the first show. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I, remember, like, initially, I saw Blake Grice, and I was like, oh, hey, dude. Hey, right, he know. was there. Was he cornering? No, he was there to support. He had right, like, a teenage fighter on there. Yeah, yeah. I but, well, like, they, they, were, they were way more active in the fight scene, but like, you'll see like, you know, Blake Grice has really taken off with like traveling the world as a ref. Like, and it's amazing because oh, yeah. like, we've judged on cards together. Like, we've cornered in locker rooms together. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I see him doing that. It's amazing. And like, I when mean, the head coach starts doing that, it's kind of tough to keep producing fighters, but he has a great staff. Um, that's what it's all about, yeah. right? It's but I about. believe like uh, Tanner uh, Saraceno, one of his longtime pupils, is kind of helping man the ship there as far as training fighters. Okay, so there's another guy there named Tanner. So, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and uh, they are kind of like level. I think he might be kind of overseeing that like development of fighters, and like right. you know we'll see like Blake pop in when he has interest in a fighter. Like that's what it turns into. Coach has got a coach. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Coaches do, and, and he's a ref. Like refs have to ref, and especially like he's a well sought after referee, and he also 
uh, teaches like referees at a ref runs yeah. week long. Oh seminars. yeah, the yeah. seminars and the and mm-hmm. the qualification courses He's sent for all over the world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I randomly got an invite to one of those, and I was like, I wonder if he thinks I'm interested in this. But anyway, uh, I may be one day. To, uh, I will go attend one together. Yeah, like, I think I got, that would be fun. I got asked recently to go help like like instruct them again. Years like, and years yeah. and years ago, the North Carolina Commission hosted a like a open like a town hall. God. On the rules, on the MMA rules. Shmuel opened his mouth and I and I, flipped. Oh, shit. you were there, right? Yes. Because I was saying yes. Jason Colbert because the dude behind me was asking the questions about like the fighters and the testosterone rub. And I started to go, motherfucker, what? And like Jason yeah. Colbert went, Trevor, we're here representing the. Gym. And I was like, fucking shit. Oh, and, and like I Jason was making me like sit back down because yeah. the guy was asking the dumbest questions. I was, that. uh, I forgot that you were there for that, but I remember that. Uh, there was a lot of talk about people needing to take the the, the qualifications for judging and people and stuff weren't needed. And, and I was helping out like before that, like uh, God, could you imagine if that guy became a judge? Man, uh, like I've uh, I don't want to be too. But here's the thing: it, 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 it is it is kind of, it is Facebook actually open to everybody. Like the ones that I have helped out with, Kevin McDonald, who we see ref in the UFC in Bellator, right. he does the same thing as well. And um, literally, like they'll put it out on forums, and he says like. He does want literally anyone to show up because he even said that we can actually further, like, uh, educate like online trolls. And he says like yeah, he's yeah. like, God damn, even having more educated fans is a good thing. But he's like, literally, sadly, like I don't anyone anyone can't. And he's that. like, and and I've helped out, like I've passed all the tests for it and stuff like that. But I'm I'm a coach, so I gotta right. do what I'm gonna like. And I've. I've I've judged fights, but I can't ref fights like at the moment. Like I'm still you don't have that qualification. I don't, right? I don't I don't have the time to do that right now. Yeah, <laughs> like I it's just, a lot of work. I mean, yeah. It's like a high. However, spot. I do. However, I ha- I will help train referees and judges, and like they'll come to me for advice on how to like like I'll have kickboxing refs ask me for Muay Thai advice in the fight, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, like. I'm just I'm too fucking busy with coaching at the moment. It's interesting. I mean, but we can definitely go check out one of those seminars. They're very eye opening and. Like, it would be yeah. better for us to be better informed for doing this. Well, when that's we, why I love when we this, say yeah. a decision is bullshit. Yeah, we'll know for well, like, sure and that's why. why, like, I tell people, like, I'll show my credentials where I'm like, hey, I've helped train judges right. and I've been a judge. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not world class, but people are good. Tell me I'm good, and I'm like, I don't take that credit. Yeah, you got to <laughs> yeah. take it where you can get it, especially when you're getting it from people that are established, like the that people arena. that wrote the book of the IKF rule set. Exactly. I don't know. Weird. Anyway, <laughs> back to this fight. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that tangent. Man, back. Weird. Back to uh, this fight. What year is this? Electric City <laughs> MMA's Tanner Sorry. Chambers yeah. is taking on Carlton Bud. Carlton Bud is a Jeff Grady fighter. We saw him fight on the How last the show. Fuck! Did we get to that? Oh, because Blake Grice. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Sorry, man. Uh, man. But yeah, he, he looked great last time out. Triangle choke. He had a little bit yeah. of a back and forth with Jake Koch before mm-hmm. he finished him off via triangle. Um, in his debut in MMA, and now yeah. he's taking on this much more proven opponent at 170. Mm-hmm. Carlton Bud is a long, lean guy for 170. He really is. He is I, I mean, he, I don't know if he like cuts to make that weight or if he just walks around naturally that lean, but he's built a lot more like guys you see, like Israel Adesanya, like that kind of body type that are mm-hmm. 185, longer, taller. Yeah. I think he's an inch or so taller than me based on me just seeing him across the room. At the last welterweight. For sure, to, to make 170, that's I mean, that's a long guy. If you put a educated Jeff Grady jab like Amy Peduto has on a guy like that, it's a nightmare to deal with. It can be a nightmare to deal with at 170. Yes. So. Um, Lewis Glover, we saw him fight on the last Conflict show mm-hmm. as well, and he'll be taking on Hunter Spehar, who won the belt yes. at Conflict 49 uh, with heavy wrestling domination. Very so Bell to bell. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I mean, his opponent did land some stuff. Hunter did get a little cut. Uh, but, I mean, it was just post to post, pillar to pillar, wrestling, old school fundamentals. Yeah. Beat, hold him Tim down. Tim did a great job. Never stopped shirt. trying to finish him. Never yeah. stopped going. Um, and he just, he doesn't, he's not impatient. Right. And he puts himself into technical fights. I'm interested to see how Lewis Glover does because Lewis Glover got hands. Yeah. You know, Lewis Glover's got some boxing. Hunter has to be very careful about like not like it's gonna be very easy for him to overreach with someone that can punch like Lewis. You're right. So it'll be very interesting to see what shots can like Lewis Glover can land when Hunter's coming in, or maybe even get Hunter on the back pedal. <coughs> I'll be curious as to see if Hunter could potentially maybe walk into some shots he doesn't like, and we'll have to see how Hunter's gonna fight off that back pedal. You know, uh, Lewis Glover like he could get out wrestled, but. 
he could also turn the fight around the hands, and we've seen it happen. Certainly. That is actually for the 170-pound title. Spahar won that on the last show. He'll be uh, he'll be defending it on this outing. There's also be a new champion decided uh, at 135 between Cameron Sandoval, who we were just talking about, and mm-hmm. Eduardo Castillo. Uh, you are familiar enough with those Battleborn guys where you could probably speak a little bit to what we can expect from very, Sandoval. Very well-rounded team. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and, and that just shows, like, the coach that Kelly is. Uh, or, uh, yeah, he, uh, he, he knows the rule book very well. You know, he, everything he's done is very high level. You know, it's been a little bit of a hectic transition coming from where he was running a gym in Nevada, and now he's here. But he brought his whole stable. He brought, like, a big stable of fighters with him. Right. And so I met them, and they hadn't even really officially opened the doors yet, but we were getting team sessions in, and they've just hit the ground running with their training, and they're, they're just doing the damn thing every weekend just about. And so Cameron Sandoval, even though he hasn't fought in a little bit because it's been, like, you know, crazy times. Moving to we, here. Even moving to here and getting settled. Um, very talented kid. He has two Muay Thai titles, like one in California or like one in Reno, I believe. Yeah, that's uh, what it and, looks like. And mm-hmm. uh, and he and and I, I work for him. He's very tight, very technical. And and seeing that with with Wendy's wrestling and their jujitsu pedigree, there the transitions, the wall work. He's a very complete fighter. Yeah, he's taking on Eduardo Castillo, who is unbelievably to me nineteen years old, and three is he and really? three and one. I mean, that's what his info says. The kid from born in, he's from Beaufort, right? Born in two thousand and two. Yeah. Born Ow, in two thousand and two. Fought on Titan. Fight on Ram. That's where I saw him fight. And he fought on Rocket Combat Sports, who um, is also local to here, right? Rocket Combat. They've they're done, in South. They're in South yeah, Carolina. Yeah, in South Carolina show. So heavy, heavy South Carolina presence from him. Mostly decision wins. His last fight out though, he did pick up a KO uh, in the second round. So I think we can expect some crispy striking here. We're going to see a very fun fight here. And, and this is going to be interesting because, like I said, Cameron does have that extra Muay Thai experience. Castillo just a bit more of a raw striker. Mm-hmm. Um, this fight is going to go everywhere. Yeah. But I exactly. think that, that we can see like Cameron dictating it on the feet very well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see and what And this is someone that Cameron knows is eager to go pro soon, too. So I believe, mm-hmm. like... He's one of those guys, like, we'll want to see. Like, I think that he might want to show. He's like, hey, I'm ready to go pro for this. Well, he's 3-1. and one, Pick up the amateur title at 4-1. and one, You qualify to you got, go pro. You, well, you know, he also has the experience stadium. of Muay Thai as well, you know. That people, too. People are counting. You like, can't like, undersell that yeah. that experience in the arena. Like, yes. you know, that all those fights that led up to his MMA career, they were for a reason, yes. with one goal in mind, you know. So, I mean, that... And that experience doesn't just go away when it's time to fight in the cage. Oh, that, no. Not that feeling of it dealing was, with that, that big fight pressure. And, and, and it's just that, that comfortability, and you just, it just teaches you to find cleaner openings. You become yeah. very concerned. Instead of like forcing an opening, like some guys that kind of jump into MMA will like force an opening. If you have striking experience, you can see the openings and dictate where you make the openings. And until you get to that like highest, highest, highest level of being in the UFC, you get like bigger cages, or and even more not time. even the yeah. highest level. It, it, until you get to the UFC, it's like every fight is bigger than your last fight. Oh, 100%. and matters way more than your last fight, exponentially more than your last fight, and you have to deal with that feeling of a bigger and bigger fight every time out. And it, it's it holds true for Muay Thai and MMA and boxing as well. So. Yeah, I, I think that both our title fights here are extremely solid, and they're just kind of the entree, because we still mm-hmm. get dessert. Yes. And the dessert are four crispy, fun, legacy fights. Man, I'm really excited. people like, that have this. featured heavily yeah. on the Conflict series to celebrate us uh, going to the 50th event. I, I've been around to a lot of fight scenes and stuff like that, but there's something about that I just love of like just being able to sit back and just watch this Carolina fight scene and see these... like. These people like transition to coaches, sometimes come back for these fights, stuff like that. I mean, like, uh, like we'll get into these fights, but like uh, Jared was showing that some of these guys have all been on like five or six conflict shows, like themselves. Like all these guys are conflict veteran, veterans right. for the most part, and and some of them have like five or six conflict belts under their belt. And I love seeing that. Like as someone who like also just loves watching this scene grow, like. It's very nostalgic to kind of see these. It's very cool to see. There is, like, a fight that kind of slipped under our radar when we were getting ready for this that I just saw is up here with these legacy fights. It's almost like kind of getting us started into these legacy fights. And that's the pro 
uh, the pro debut of Colin Godbout. Yes, Ooh. you were speaking very highly of this kid. And this one, like, I think I've like seen him before, but you've definitely like had an eye on this kid for a while. Now. Yeah, yeah. I've commentated many of his amateur fights. He fought like three times for Fight for It, um, and he fought um, at the last Conflict show. And he's just a guy who is just a dog of a wrestler, and yeah. he's just he he hits pretty hard, but. It's mostly just about him controlling and dominating with the grappling, uh, and he's got some jujitsu slickness too. Uh, I think it, I think he came into this game with wrestling experience mostly, Makes sense. and it's just been ever since he got in, it's just been about honing that, honing that, mm -hmm. honing that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he, he defeated Levi Whitlow, and Levi Whitlow was an unbeaten amateur, and then he fought Michael Hardenen and went the distance with Michael Hardenen. Fought like. like Serious guy, like experienced yeah. guys from good camps. Very yeah, there's not a lot of guys like, that went like, the distance with Michael Hardy. Yeah, and, and most, he finished like, mostly everyone. Looking at this kid's record, I was like, oh, he he fought like really good guys, like because you can build right. up a record quick around here. But then it also shows where like he picked out some very specific fights to go pro with. Yeah, he's got a. He's I, going, he, yeah. I'm misremembering actually that he lost a decision split to Levi Whitlow, but I did. I thought that he won that fight. Uh, but yeah, he he fought uh, Timothy Balo. That's where I first saw him mm -hmm. at Fight Four at Four, and Michael Hardenen, Corey Russell, Damian Rhodes. I mean, these are all Arnice Castro. He fought at the last show. Came to, came up from that gym in Florida. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I mean, he's just fought guys that are super good, and a lot of guys that are trying to get to this pro level. They're they're trying to get there. As fast, as fast as possible, with as many wins as possible, however easy or not easy that may be. Five tough fights. But he took... To go a long way. He took a lot of amateur. tough, yeah. tough fights as an amateur. If you get, like, five buzzsaws, then you're going to have a rough time going pro sometimes. So, like, and this kid, he's had some really good amateur fights now. Like, yeah. Like, good experience. It's yeah. just time. It's time. just time. Yeah. And he's up against Donovan Wagner. Uh, Donovan does have a little bit of experience. He fought on CFL... 12 in 2017, but it's been a layoff ever since then, and I'm pretty sure he's still out of that Florida uh, camp that he was with at that time, um, but he looks like a little bit of a wrestler, too, from mm -hmm. what I saw, so we'll see uh, who can come out on top in this one. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see where Colin Godbout goes with his pro debut, because in my opinion, when he was against Arnie's Castro, he looked better than he's ever looked. So we can see well, the, as he goes the, up this the, next the level. The crew at Gemma has a good idea of what to do for their amateurs to pros. Like yes, they, they've been very yes. consistently producing amateurs to pros out of the North. Carolina. I believe that when he first fought at Fight Four, he was not with Gemma. And I've seen this happen to like three or four fighters where they're good, they can win fights even as amateurs. Mm -hmm. Brent Williams, yeah. But they don't become true martial artists until they hook up with a gym like Jim O. Zach Thrift mm -hmm. went to Jim O and became a completely different guy. Mm -hmm. uh, kept that same energy, but became way more technical. Truck on Carson yeah. is a guy who started working with them, and, and it kind of elevated him. Um, so yeah, a lot of these guys, they are just out there in the ether at these at these gyms where you can get work, but mm -hmm. like we were talking about a certain gym earlier. Yeah. Where if you want to train out of that gym, it's one thing. If you want to teach classes out of that gym, it's one thing. But if you're preparing to be in another fight with a grown man your size who's trying to kill you, you're probably yeah, not going to be able to get work at this particular gym man. that can get you ready. Man, they're done that. Right, <laughs> like yeah. it's called being 18. A gym yeah. that shall remain nameless was, <laughs> was heavily dissed upon earlier before for this exact reason. Um, but yeah, ever since Colin got about hooked up with Jim O, it's been the same story as it's been with all those other fighters I previously mentioned. They've just taken what his best strengths are and made it the focus of his fighting strategy mm -hmm. while trying to minimize the weaknesses. And that's just shore up everything. Yeah. Just shore up the natural abilities. Don't try to make everybody GSP. Make your, make your striking better for wrestling. Make your jiu-jitsu better it's, for wrestling. You know, I'm observing strictly from like a, a fan and my limited experience as an analyst, but you've been in this game a lot longer and you're also an actual coach. But I, that's one of the problems I have with like the Jackson Wink system of creating MMA fighters because they, you kind of have fighters that well, all do they, the same techniques. They, they are more at the they absorb fighters. Yes, exactly. Instead of create fighters, there like they're they're at that point. They like bring a, you into their system. A, ATT is that way now too, where it's like I think ATT has a better uh, me with coaching and in MMA when you see gyms that want to take someone from day one scratch to pro, one of the best ones to look at right now is probably ATT. Mm. Where Jackson Week was 
that kind of hub of like they kind of had all these wrestlers show up, they created MMA games, and then like once they got all these pros, it became more of like an absorption pool instead of a creation pool. Does that make sense? Yeah. Where even though ATT absorbs fighters because they have the Florida fight scene on lock and they have ATT gyms all over. However, they're building up fighters from scratch at their headquarters. Like day one, it could be like a wrestler still, but they have like good day one programs that you're not finding so much at some of these other big house gyms. I just had a great idea for the first t-shirt for the podcast that's not just the logo of the podcast. I couldn't figure out what that face was, and I was like, there needs to be a funny shirt with your face on it that just says, does that make sense? (laughs) Like a a bubble of you saying, does that make sense? I don't know how many times I just said it, but I say it so many times. I I say it every day in class. It's it's such a coach thing to say, but you say it all the time. Like like, a a fucking cop. Listening to you talk to Vic out there, you must have dropped it on him like a billion times. And he was like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, it is something that you, I did, I did spend like, you know, four or five hours coaching before I came in here. So I've been set up. You're, you're kind of like, in coach mode. Yeah. That's why I was really excited to get you in here. Yeah. I was like, damn, Trev's warmed up. You, know? yeah, you saw me get 30 <laughs> seconds of, of like karate. Like, uh, yeah. I saw room. you do some living room karate. And, and you were like, what is this? And I was like, I was thinking about a stroke again. I don't know. But like, is that, is, was that martial arts? What did I, did I black out? But. <laughs> Man, no, I think that'd be a great shirt. I think that'd be a sick, like, badge of honor, or, like, show exclusive. <laughs> That's a collab, Poke. Yeah. Um, anyway, Charleston Powell coming back, fighting in Charleston once again. Once again. Out of that Malachi Freeman gym, yeah. taking on Daniel Gary, who is 0-2 in BKFC, ha- has some amateur experience as an, as an MMA fighter, and is, is stepping this into this a, one this is a great. This is a great welcome back for Charleston Powell. Um... He had a good amateur bat. He has a great amateur, you know. He had a great amateur run. Yep. Um, he's out of Malachi's gym. He's also had like some early work with Jeff Grady and like those. Right. Fun- I think he's way more of like a boxer now. He likes to focus on his boxing. So this other cat being an zero and two bare knuckle boxer, like this fight is going to start out and probably stay as a boxing match. Because I believe well, actually, does Tar- Charleston have professional boxing or not? I couldn't remember if he I did mean, that or not uh, um, on his record. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I couldn't remember if I saw him pop up on one of the same shows that like Jordan Weeks was on, and we'll talk about him in a bit. I don't see anything. I couldn't remember if I saw him, Charleston Powell you know, attached some boxing matches where or not. Where, sometimes like, a boxing a lot, match. Well, a lot of these conflict guys have boxing matches because yeah. Jared is very well tied into the boxing scene. I wouldn't be surprised um, if he does have boxing fights, but boxing fight records and kickboxing fight records are one of those things where it's like. Damn, is nobody really keeping up with this? Like, it just seems like tapology, a lot of shit especially gets, tapology, is such dude. a well maintained. Like, they had this before card. Before tapology, there was the underground. Tapology like the had underground. this card together before Jared did. Yeah. Just based on the match. Well, I, I just, remember before tapology, we had, like, the underground. Right. And, like, they, they would sync up with, like, the actual oh, state commissions I, and stuff. I found like some that. boxing. However, I like, found some boxing. He did have boxing, right? Southpaw Fight Night and Battle at the Beach uh-huh. and Monroe uh-huh. versus uh-huh. Duarte. He is three uh-huh. and two. Three and two is. Or, no, um, sorry. He has three boxing fights total, so he's one and two as a boxer. Forgot how to tie my shoes, but I remember boxing matches. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bo- you remember boxing matches from 2020, 2018. Yeah, 2019. I was like, because, well, like I said, like, like, like this is why I like this matchup. Like, yeah. I, I'm a fan of watching this fight scene grow, man. He fought like, on, I really am, yeah. He fought on Conflict MMA 1, it looks like. So, wow. As an amateur. Yeah, so we're going to see this fight probably dictate as like a small gloves boxing match. We're gonna yeah, see that's pretty sweet. Yeah. That is pretty sweet. Uh, and that's why when I saw this matchup, I was like, oh, we're going to like this matchup. He's up against a guy who's been there, Bare Knuckle, and you know, I, I know we haven't really talked about Bare Knuckle on this show. I think I'll save a majority for of my thoughts for it. The uh, homie Andy on, Wynn just signed up for it. For, on an for actual Bare Knuckle match. show that yeah. we maybe do or talk about. I know Tony Soto's got a fight coming up. Uh, it seems like they can't fucking figure out what to do with Taylor Starling. And, like, I have no idea why they have such a hard time she fighting fights for her. 25 or 15. She, I think she can, she said that she can fight at flyweight, but she has fought at 115. I think her other fight in BKFC was at flyweight. Man, I hope she and Andy don't fight. They're my homies. They're why would, Andy, why yeah. would they have them fight when Taylor's the biggest star that, I, I'm about to go on a huge BKFC rant. We should save that for well, BKFC. Because Andy will fight I just fucking don't anybody. fucking get the BKFC thing. I don't know why people like it so much. Yeah. I'm glad that my homies are getting paid. Yeah. I'm glad that Taylor Starling is one of the biggest fucking I'll MMA say, stars right I'll now say in the this, world. Well, like, there's there's the people that and this is no knock on you this is the people that do jujitsu and haven't 
fall, like there's it's a different type of person that's attracted to it. Like like it, people that fight MMA are fucking crazy. Oh no no people no, no, that no. do bear no, it's just like one of those things of just like it's a spectacle and and certain people are drawn to do it. So I'm just like man like I, I'm all here for okay, it. Okay so let like, me yeah. rephrase what I just said. Yeah. I understand the appeal from the fighter's perspective. Yeah like as because I know a lot, yeah. I know enough fighters to know the kind of motherfuckers that want to yeah. be in a situation like that. Like there are fighters that if they could. They would fight like in a circle of hay bales in London in seven in the seventeen hundreds with well, like a I bunch mean, of that, people around. That's I mean, what that's what you know, they're fighting they just, like in Russia right now. They, they like, want to yeah. feel that connection to that ancient past some, of some, feudalism. You know, they, yeah. I, I get that. Truck and Carson. Some, some people are the, like we're like the ancient descendants of like guys that boxed outside of Truck bars for fun. Like Truck and Carson. Truck and yeah, like he's that, born yeah. to be a BKFC fighter, in my opinion. Yes, and, and he proved so. it when he went. And you BKFC. know, it's funny, but like but, Mike, Taylor and Tony, like so are they. Like, their I don't personalities fucking like, get it from a fan's perspective. I just <laughs> don't fucking like watching it. Really? I, I don't. Wow. I mean, I get really invested when I watch Tony or Taylor or Truck and fight because I know them and yeah. I'm invested in their success as a person, but. When I watch two people I don't know do it, I'm just like, this is the dumbest fucking shit I've ever seen. That's also, so, I say that whenever I watch any fight. But that's also why I fucking love it. Because even me, I'm just like, I, I deserve this. <laughs> Boom. Right. right. But I, I guess like, so. Like, I guess with it me, is. Like, like, for me, I'm just like one of those people where I'm just like. I watch a sport where people I, are regularly oh, trying to break every, each other's Every time like, I sit cage side as a coach, I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with us? It's but, not like, even about the violence. Yeah. It's just about, like, I don't know, the whole aesthetic. and I, don't know. I appreciate it. It's so funny, man. I I feel like we could have a great. Let's have a viewing party of it. <laughs> yeah. And we'll discuss. Yeah. Let's have like a pros and cons table of a bare knuckle fights. We'll get people we pro and against. I, it I we'll think love. I think that'll be fun. And yeah. I know Tony's got a fight coming up soon, so I'll have to watch bare knuckle soon yeah. eventually. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll do a BKFC show. Yeah, I'm show excited for this fight. This, this will rant be, endlessly. So we're gonna see we're gonna see a small glove boxing match with this one. Probably, yeah, yeah probably. Um, Jordan Weeks uh, out of Fitness Edge mm -hmm. three four in MMA is gonna be stepping over into the pro kickboxing four arena. And one. In pro boxing, four and one or five and one. Oh boxing. wow, really? Uh, his not his last fight was against Muhammad Ali's uh, grandson. Whoa, that's not. Listed he got on here. beat pretty quick, but like I was happy that he got that. Take it on Mike Hazard, conflict legend. Dude, goddamn, Mike Hazard, I love that guy so much, and I even told him I was like, Mike, you're one of the scariest people I know, but he is. A gent like he is. The motherfucker's a, name is Mike Hazard. Hazard. Yeah, and like and he says it I, on his driver's license. You like, know? it's like not a, that's not a nickname. Like I, I'm a descendant of a dude that might get drunk and fight out of a bar for fun. Mike <laughs> Hazard is the descendant of like Mongolians or something. Right. Like, yes. That man, he's a loving father, like hardworking. He's a war. Like he's he's about fighting though. He has that thing that he has to do this. And um, he, I know like he's beaten Cody Jones in pro kickboxing. Right. Um, he's beaten some other guys from Fitness Edge. And and this is a wild like matchup. These are two very like Mike Hazard, Hazard hasn't fought since Conflict Thirty Four in two thousand. Hasn't fought for a minute, but I'll tell you what, man, the dog is still in him. Like I don't doubt that, that man. Like like when I when I talked to him last, I, I was like, God damn, Mike, that dog is still there, and he's like, Yeah, and I was like, Shit, yeah, bro. And like I told him, I was like, Sorry, I really, bro. I really hate this. I love this matchup. But I hate this matchup because of how well I know these guys. Like, I'm someone I've worked out with Jordan. I've held for him. Like, I've given him coaching tips. Like, I know Cody Jones very well. Like, I used to coach Cody Jones, like, fucking forever ago. Right, and, you're and, pretty and, close with him. And I'm very close with the Fitness Edge guys. So, and Mike Hazard being coached by Jeff Grady. Like, Mike Hazard being coached by Jeff Grady is dangerous. Right. Like, because this is Mike Hazard with Jeff Grady. Right. Like, they've been boys, like, through, like, uh, Charleston MMA back in the day. And the old ATT days, uh, uh, days like they, the guys that days. What I got my words mixed up. The ATT <laughs> days, they were training together. Guys, whatever. Um, like, but now, like this is Jeff is like his head coach, and like they've really been honing down for a kickboxing match. And I'm really excited. And Jordan's pro kickboxing with Cody's Muay Thai. This is a fun matchup. For I just, sure. I just hate how much I like both of these guys. Yeah. But goddamn, you better pay attention because you're seeing these guys beat the shit out of each other. Like all stand and bang mode. Like exactly, man. Like stand Jordan Weeks mode. is the definition of yeah, yeah. If it put on gloves, like <laughs> that is him. Like, and, and then you've got Mike Hazard, who was his last name personified. And dude, what like <sighs> two savages throwing? I'm not like we're gonna love how this fight plays out. We're going to love seeing how it's finished or how it goes in the scorecard. But I'm also going to, part of me is going to be like, 
fuck, man. <laughs> like, I'll also be like, oh, he got hit. Please, I hope he slips the next one. Like, I mean, <laughs> my commentary is going to be all over for this one. Oh, I mean, this is like, like you said, like our, our good friend, the mad coach, once said, this is one of those ones you can't really commentate. You just have to sit back and call what <sighs> and you can. And call what you can. And, yeah, and just man. hope for the best. Um, the main event of the evening should be a damn interesting one. Kobe Wall, uh, South Carolina MMA kind of legend mm-hmm. himself, uh, will be taking on Joel Maddock, who is coming in visiting from that showcase area, mm-hmm. but is surging at 4-0 as a pro right now. I like this showcase versus conflict matchup. Yeah, this is a good one. And mm-hmm. I really think that this is one of those fights where... This is one of those fights where Kobe it's like, Wall's damn. Kobe one of those guys where he's taking some time doing some pro boxing as well, man. And also... Refing, he was refing at the last conflict show. Does work with the commission. I mean, mm-hmm. he's very plugged into this he very much South is. Carolina fight game, and uh, he's had a little bit of a layoff from MMA. But yeah, this is the fiftieth conflict show, and well, this he's is had that layoff, but like he laid off from MMA, stayed active with boxing. I mean, this is so a, he's not total. Sh- he's not totally oh, yeah, rusty. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he looked in great shape. He, when he yeah, when I saw him, I was like, "Have you ever not looked perfect? Fuck, man!" Right, like, you know exactly, and it's one of those things where it's like, um, you know how active is he in the gym when it comes to the MMA? Mm Because this is a guy who finishes people on the ground and has extremely good jiu-jitsu. So I'm interested to see what Kobe's got. I mean, this is what I I think that he's been refining stuff that he knew he needed to do to be a pro. Like yeah. I don't know where he he's wants got to a good record. Like as a pro. I don't know where he wants to go as a pro. Right. But I believe he like he's doing this because he wants to show like he's become a better pro or like the pro that he wants to be to fight again. And that's something people have to find. Like the pro that you're you're happy being. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's thirty three. Um, he's got some years left in him. He's been gone since he lost to Luis Pena in 2017. As far as MMA goes, we we didn't say he's been active in boxing since then. But this is a guy, Joel Maddock, who's been active ever since he was an amateur. It's been a nonstop freight train from 2017 till now yeah. of building his career. And, you know, this is a guy who's, who's submitted every, all four of his opponents as a pro. So I'm, I'm really hoping that while he's been working that boxing, getting ready for this fight, we've seen a lot more jiu-jitsu defense work. Yes. And, and just the ability to not let the fight get there in the first place. And Char- uh, he or Kobe, is, is he training with Malachi for this? Is that what um, it has him as? Or is it, no, it's like Gibson Saw's gym, right? Uh, well, if the batch up sheet would move. Let's see. I think it said that. Kobe Wall. Okay. Yep, Gibson Saw. Gibson Saw's gym, right? Okay. Right. Well, that's a good sign for think, talking about improving jiu-jitsu, man. If you guys don't know who Gibson Saw is, he's one of the top competitive black belts in the world. Like, that man is a monster. Uh, and where is his opponent training out of? Revolution. Oh, and like that's and, and that's <laughs> that Jimmy Fowler. Jimmy Fowler, and he's the one also. Uh, he's coaching Gabriel Brown, and, right. and you know that's a very this matchup is a good one. Gym. That, that's a very competitive gym, yeah. you know, very slick. Like they have the right people there to coach wrestling. They have the right people to coach striking and jujitsu as well. It's one of those things where it's like, and Jimmy Fowler is a has a ton of fight experience that he puts behind his coaching. It's like you know, damn, I respect that this is a, a showcase night for the conflict legends but they didn't do them any favors in the matchmaking Not, uh, but like they, that they, is, it's a well made match where you see I'll most say promoters this, props to Jared for making very good fight cards Right. you see like he really won't do stuff in a person's favor but it's like he'll be like hey if you lose a fight then you fight. it's like he follows the CBA rule very well Yes. when you get to A it needs to be A fucking plus. And this is a, an A plus fight. And these are these are what make you those A plus. I think yeah. I think all four of these last fights are A plus fights. Yeah, these are like and, and like props to Jared, man. He he makes some great matchups. So conflict uh, fifty is sold out. However, you can still watch the pay per view, and a benefit to watching the pay per view instead of being there live, if there ever was one, was that you get to hear us. Uh, you get to hear the commentary. I don't think they have figured out a way to do that in the arena. Yet I actually went to UFC once, and when I went to in Raleigh, they had a thing where you could like tune in on a radio and hear the commentary, but you couldn't do that when I went to go see the UFC in Greenville. So I don't think the UFC's got that figured out 100. percent I but think it depends on the stadium. <laughs> that 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 I can imagine too. like you know the Hurricane Stadium is rowdy, 
The one in Greenville is probably like a good. It's probably like the Bojangles Stadium. It's a lot smaller. Yeah, it was yeah, a lot yeah, smaller. Yeah. Muikano. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh man, Muikano he's versus becoming that. Mo- I called it. He's becoming that motherfucker. Of 55. Well, yeah, you did. You did kind of call that. But yeah. We'll see what he does. Um, so yeah, conflict fifty guys. Uh, it is sold out, but you can watch the pay per view and you can join us for a night of delightful fights in the Low Country. Uh, posted by Jared Williams and Andrew Stokes Promotions. We thank them again for having us, and we can't wait to call these exciting fights for all of you guys this weekend. Now, let's talk some UFC. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, Trevi did call it when you said that Moicano wants to be more of a motherfucker. He has stepped up to the plate on short notice to take yes. on Rafael Dos Anjos. I think a lot of people were hoping for Islam Makachev. Why do you think this is the right call to put in Hanato instead? Uh, because he's coming off of that resurgence of a knockout. Mm-hmm. And this is... So, that this this fight is great. Because no matter who wins, gets a big stock raise. Yeah, definitely. Rafael Dos Anjos coming off a bit of that layoff. Taking on someone who is like has a great showing at 55. You know what? How do you get back in the spotlight? You take out someone who just got into the spotlight. Yeah. And Moicano, man, like... Coming into that flow, like being up in weight, he's feeling healthy. Yeah. Like, and they're fighting at 160, right? I think so they're going to fight at like 160 or 165. Yeah. It just says catch weight. Yeah. I've, I've, we've, I've seen 60, I've seen 65. Um, Rafael is, was ready for another amazingly high level striker, but it's a totally different fight with Moicano. You know, if he was. You've got a striker, you've got a guy well, who's it, being more comfortable you, in striking. If. Rafael was training to counter kickboxing. Right. If he's looking for kicks, he's going to get punched a lot because <laughs> Moicano is just going to punch your fucking block off is what he's going to try to do. Um, so I'll be interested to see what kind of pace Rafael starts with. Right. I feel he... like with this, like, Hinato's going to try and go, let me see how hard I can push at 55. I think Moicano's going to want to come out and go, I, he, he's like, I think he was just starting to feel how much he can put his gas down in a yeah. fight. And I feel like he's going to try and come out and bring a really hard gas pedal down fight. That's, what, fight that's usually what you do when you come in because, short notice, right? Because to fight Fiziev, you got to be a bit more patient. Yeah. So I feel like Hinato is going to try and come out and break that patience in the first bat, make Rafael get uncomfortable, get him to open up, and try to keep taking some spotlight. Like, he knows this guy used to have the belt. He knows that he's got to, he can punch this guy and change the fight. Yeah, definitely. So, man, like... Can, is Rafael more experienced? Yes, but I, I see Hinato's tenacity and speed becoming a bit of an it and confidence. Time has gone on to show that RDA has, as time has gone on in his career, has had a problem dealing at, at this weight class with the wrestling and the grappling. And yeah. with Hinato, we're talking about a guy who's becoming more strike, striking comfortable. But jiu jitsu wise, they're going to be pretty even. You can uh, never R- forget R- about it. RDA can do a great, can do a better job on the cage than Hinato yeah. or uh, Hinato. But Hinato is going to attack more off the cage. It won't be as very wrestling heavy. Um, but I, I you feel can just like, never forget about yeah. Moicano's jiu jitsu ability. I think exactly. he's a, I think he's more of a finisher than RDA is. I think RDA. We're going to see RDA potentially like we could see RDA maybe out wrestle him. Yeah. But Hinato uh, having this gas tank at fifty five. Can probably push back for his wrestling a bit more. We'll see what he looks like but, at sixty-five. Yeah, you know, that's um, a, it's a and, and, a lot and, of people have like, you know, for a long time. Uh, Hinato could counter get back to his feet. We'll see how RDA handles that because it's just a different fight than he had to train for, and I it makes me re- like I was excited for the Physio fight. I'm, Same. I'm excited for this one. Too. I think I think everybody's excited to see Physio fight, yeah. no matter who he's fighting. I mean, he's just a must see TV kind of guy, in my opinion. Very top heavy card this weekend, man. I got to be honest with you, this is a. Uh, this one's kind of a stinker. You got um, Jalen Turner coming back. I mean, he's kind of an exciting guy. I oh, you're really kind of the undercard. Well, yeah. I'm or, just. Yeah. I mean, I know that uh, Yan Zhao Nan. Uh, I know that she's got some kind of beef with her opponent. Um, no, oh no, no, wait. I that's see. that's the Mar- that's the Marina Morose versus yeah, Maria. I see Ron some Fon. fun fights like Dustin Jacoby being on there. Jessica I versus Manon Ferro. That could be uh, Tim Elliott. Brian Kelleher is always fun. Yeah, but he's not going to be fun against a guy Nermaga whose last name is yeah. Nermagomedov, yeah. right? So, I mean, you know, it might be... Maria Agapova, she's a fun one to watch. Um, and apparently her and her opponent have some beef from what oh, I've really? seen online. I don't understand the beef because it's probably manufactured by the press, but, um, yeah. I mean, I just think that this is a 
a card where they're really relying on Jorge Masvidal star power to get you to buy this fucking. Oh, one hundred percent. And Jorge I, star. I think, like, I'll say this: like the pre, the prelim and early prelim fight card, I I kind of like it. I think that these are good matchups of people. It's like the winners of these fights got to show like they're trying to stay relevant. Like these are all like, I'll say this: this whole fight card is not so much about getting title shots, it's more like all these matchups are trying to stay relevant. Tim Elliott's fighting for his fucking job, I feel like. Well, like I said, these are all like fights to stay relevant. Does that yeah. make like Like, who on here is really going to get a title shot next? I mean, Bryce Mitchell trying to find out. He's like, the closest. But if he stands with Edson, is Bryce Mitchell phenomenal in the wrestling and, and jiu-jitsu department? We're going to yeah. learn a but lot. But we're going to learn Bryce. a lot because I saw Bryce get hit with shots. Let's, let's start at the bottom. Let's start at the bottom. Greg Hardy taking on Sergey. Oh, Sergei. yeah. Sorry about that. And no, it's okay. Yeah. I, I started off with Moicano and Dos Anjos, So, I mean, we did jump around a little Fuck bit. Fuck it. We're going live. But I really only want to talk about these main card fights because we're already over an hour. And, you know, yeah. it's just one of those things. Everyone's where got ADD and shit like it's that. It's literally not a great card. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think Jorge's star is kind of starting to fade, and we'll talk about that as we get more into the main event. But, I, you know, I think Greg Hardy... He's one of those How the guys fuck where does he keep winding up on UFC teams, <coughs> man. I mean, he's a he. All of his fights either end in they end in KO or disqualification. I think he's still in that boat where people are cool with seeing him like lose a fight. Mm. Yeah, I mean with Sergey Spivak, I mean I feel like this is one of those like. Greg Hardy's gonna knock this guy out fights. Probably. Yeah, Sergey. Sergey's got. But here's the thing, moves. man. I think like anybody could probably try and like Greg's Hardy getting way better on the ground. Like we can see like Greg Hardy can get knocked out. Like, we can see him get out wrestled a bit. Like, we'll see, like, you know, Sergey, like, however, it don't be really surprised. It's also, don't be surprised if Sergey beats Greg Hardy because oh, yeah. it's also heavyweight. Because uh, it's heavyweight and also because Sergey's a pretty good grappler and we've seen Greg have some trouble with the grappling. Yeah. But, you know, Greg's one of those guys who, obviously, I don't really condone his actions outside of fighting at all um, in his previous life or if he still is continuing to do them, but. I really admired the way he came into the sport. He was like, all right, I'm going to try this sport. He didn't try it with a fucking guy whose cousin's friend was a, a former roommate of a Muay Thai coach and got with right. some gym. He was like, I have a lot of fucking money from playing in the and NFL. He went to I'm going to go move into the... I'm yeah. moving into the fucking dorms at AT&T and sleeping on a cot. Oh, class. he, like, he I mean, did it the right way. Yeah. Like, good for him, you know. That's and I, I'm one of those where it's like, where it's like damn, you know. I just kind of go, like, like to me, I'm just like, I'm like, okay, cool. Here's a guy like, with $2.5 million minimum in the bank, if not more, and he's sleeping on a cot. But, a however, cot. like, even if he didn't have, like, the, 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 the stigmata over him, like, Greg Hardy, like, I kind of still see him as one of those guys where he's doing this because he knows he's an athlete. And I'm like, okay, good for him. I think like, he you know, takes very yeah. hard fights. He does. Like, I, I think oh, he could for play his it safe. for his overall experience. He's taken some really hard fights. I like, think I'll he give could play. Problem. He could play it a lot safer and probably just, you know, knock guys out. Yeah. But he took hard fights. You know, UFC 249 he fights the Oregon De Castro, who's definitely got a winning record. Maurice Green. Who is a proven heavyweight now? Yeah. Maurice Marcin Tybora was able to take him to the ground and pound him out. Ty Tuivasa knocked him out cold, but that's his strength of schedule in the UFC. He, Alexander Volkov, he took that fight on short notice. And yeah, lost. I was like, oh, like when I saw that, I was like, but it was a decision. He went the fucking you. distance yeah, with Volkov, with Volkov yeah. like in his like sixth MMA fight ever. Yeah, MMA is such a weird fucking. Sport, I mean, yeah, like. it's one of those things where Hardy is not the greatest fighter. Or martial artist in the world, he, but he gives of, me a glimpse. He's, he's one of the best athletes at heavyweight. He gives me a glimpse into what the world of mixed martial arts at heavyweight would be like if more guys like him ended up fighting instead of in the NFL. It's horrifying, right? Because like, a lot of guys don't make well, it well, out of the NFL. Seeing, we've seen like the people like we, we are seeing these lifelong football, basketball players get into <laughs> combat sports more, and like that trend. And like me, as long as I've been in it, it's gone right. from like. The tough guys are the athletes. And I'll say this. As someone that wasn't even like a tough guy or much of an athlete, well, I saw both sides. And I was looking at these athletes coming in, and I'm just like, dude, these are going to be fucking ninjas. Ten like, years yeah. ago, the biggest... The well, it's because the gap. Like, the better the athlete, the faster you can learn, the faster you can adapt, the faster you can perform. So this turnaround for what they can do as far as getting fight ready is very impressive. Like, these NFL guys, like, their turnaround to become fighters is... 
pretty goddamn impressive. Dude. Yeah, ten years ago, the biggest crossover athletes in our sport that weren't wrestlers were Brendan Schaub and Matt Mitrione. But this is also and those were it, college though. football. Play- I think Matt Mitrione might have played a few NFL games, but these yeah. were like guys who did okay in college, but weren't quite good enough to make it to the NFL. Those guys are probably out there already fighting more than we know. They're just not exceptional. Greg Hardy was in the fucking NFL, and not only was he in the NFL, he was exceptional elite. amongst yes. the NFL. Like, yeah. he, uh, being elite amongst the elite is, is something that or, really can't be undersold. It can't I be think undersold. that like we'll see a pretty good trend happening where we'll have these young guys that come in, have a couple good seasons, and go, okay, I might not be on the Wheaties box, but what if I take this money and I take a year off and get ready for some fights? And they mm-hmm. can have, they can finish out like their twenties in NFL or get their twenties done in their NFL. And at twenty eight, especially at heavyweight, especially at heavyweight, at, 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 if you weight, stop playing football at like twenty eight, and then you spend two years getting ready for MMA, you can have a great six to eight years in MMA, but dude. Clarity like, is showing us that. right And now. I'm just like, it's it's about to be horrifying. Some of these like. So I'm interested. Yeah. I'm always interested. When it comes to Hardy, I'm yeah. always interested. Yeah. And because of that reason, he gives me a oh, one hundred percent. He gives yeah. me a glimpse of that world that I would like to live in. Where the I just wish that I wish he had better fight. press behind him. He'd be like an American hero. Yeah, honestly, I don't really understand this narrative that he got off of his domestic violence charges because he was so kind of scary and uh, intimidating because when he gets on the mic, he, he's just like a goof. Like, yeah, just like, he's man, just like... This yeah. guy's kind of a fucking goof. Like, yeah. you know, like he's just kind of a, a boner. Like, he's just kind of a, of a guy. Yeah. Like, just, Kind of a cringe lord, like the kind of guy who would post wolf memes on Instagram. If he if he wasn't if he didn't have somebody you know managing his Instagram, fair, he would fair. probably post I can, wolf memes. I can, I can see him doing that. I mean, yeah. you know, I just I just get this cringe vibe from him, and I just uh, I think if he could talk, man, if he could like actually talk, it, people would not give a fuck about what he did before he came to the UFC. Yeah. Because since he's been been in the UFC, he's been all action. Yes. And he's been, in my opinion, whether you love him or you hate him, he's kind of must-see TV because he's either knocking somebody out or he's getting knocked out. Getting knocked out. Um, so, yeah, yeah. That, that's a, a good way to start things off. Heavyweight, you can usually count on Greg Hardy for a banger, and that's probably why he keeps ending up on UFC pay-per-views. Kevin Holland taking on Alex Oliveira. This is a crazy fight for me because I find that both of these guys are kind of, like, built similarly and they have opposite skill sets. Like, Alex Oliveira is pretty damn good on the ground, but I think the thing that he's best at is cheating and, get, and not getting caught. And mm-hmm. he's like one of the dirtiest clean fighters in MMA, if that makes any sense. Like, he, he rides the line just enough. If the ref's on the other side, he'll grab the cage. If the ref starts circling around, he'll grab it with his other yeah, hand. He, yeah. He'll ride the gloves. I mean, he'll do anything. Uh, to get even an inch ahead in a fight, and that's why he constantly has banger fights. This fight is funny. Like these guys, like Alex Oliveira at fifty five is kind of what Kevin Holland did at eighty five. Right. I kind of feel like like these guys are very like almost like the same fighter. Exactly. Like when I look at these guys, especially I'm, from I'm, a like, physical perspective, they're both like. But like, uh, however, I think we're going to see Kevin Holland be the bigger guy in a fight final. Yeah, because he's going down to welterweight. And, if I, and Alex Oliveira, he's a hefty guy at welterweight. Mm-hmm. But he also came up from lightweight. And and I feel like, you know, we're going to see... I, I think that this is a fight that's going to keep Kevin Holland relevant and kind of help Alex Oliveira find his way into retirement. Right, to be honest, yeah. The, the Brazilian Cowboys, they call him. He's been, um, he's been around a long time. It's weird that yeah. these guys are such different... Places in their careers, and they have very similar records. Yeah. Like Kevin Holland has been extremely active since he got into this, but um, yeah, I think Holland, you know, he's on that. Well, that's because Oliveira's had more time in the UFC. He's just on a skid, uh, you know, coming off of coming off of. Well, he um, got into the top ten in middleweight. Then, yeah. I mean, he got pretty close. He fought Derek Brunson. Oh, I mean, that's go. a pretty yeah. good fight for him. Um, but Carl yeah, he's got in the top ten. Yeah. He, he got he had a little bit of a skid at middleweight, so now he's coming down to welterweight. I'm very curious to see what he looks like on the scale Friday afternoon because he was already, in my opinion, a pretty thinned out guy. But mm-hmm. you know, it's 15 pounds. You know, where where's that 15 pounds hiding? Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure he's got a team that can find it. Um, I I love Cal- Kevin Holland. I think he's an entertaining fighter for more than just his you know. Uh, Talking in the fight and etc. etc. I think that especially when 
it comes to some of the ways he's knocked people out. You think, I always think about oh, that yeah. jockery knockout. I mean, this guy's got power from places that most people don't even have punches. No, uh, he he lands some of the best, cleanest crosses I've seen. Yeah. yeah. And he's got long arms and he knows where to put them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bryce Mitchell, we're, we were talking about Bryce earlier. We're going to find out a little bit about Bryce. Like, he has, to, he has to grab a hold of Edson. He has to put him in the cage. He has to take him down. Edson's going to hit you on the way in. And, and yeah. Bryce, so like, like, do you think it, it's it, front kick, or do you think he just sticks to the low kick? No, he's gonna hurt Bryce with some punches. I feel mm, because yeah, Bryce, he have cleaner punches. Bryce took time off from a nasty concussion. He came back in his last fight. It was against uh, the Uriah Faber prodigy, not prodigy, but product. Um, has the earlobes out of Team Alpha Male. Fucking has his ear. I can't. I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, <laughs> shit. I totally spaced it. on the name. Um, <coughs> but like he out wrestled him, but he also got hit every time he came in for a takedown. Yeah. And there were still shots where he's like, oh shit, I'm really shooting into these. So we'll have to see how Bryce keep keep entering into these takedowns. Keep what was that? Oh. oh no, just keep oh, going. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I feel like you know we got to see how Bryce enters from the get go. Also, he has to look out for kicks. Yeah. I, I don't want to see Bryce shoot into a kick. Like, this fight, this fight's a fucking shootout. Even though it's a striker versus grappler. I mean, we all remember uh, Benil versus Edson. Yeah. And Benil was fucking him up for three rounds with the takedown, and then he just got a little pre- too predictable with if that you takedown. Can't, if, you can't knock, Edson, if you can't knock Edson out and you're not named Khabib, it shows, like, he, he, can, can, hang, he, can, he can hang the fuck in there if you're yeah. a good grappler. So this is a big test for Bryce Mitchell. For sure. And me, and like, uh, Bryce Mitchell is someone where like his coach, Rolly Delgado, has been talking about this kid for over years, like 10, years. 11 years. Right. Like, and raised him from nothing. Raised him from nothing. Right. And, and it's, I, I, I've always watched Bryce Mitchell because like I've heard Rolly talk about him before this kid was even fighting. And it's like been wild to see him fight someone like Edson Barbosa, who I've been watching fight in the UFC. Just for as a long decade or more as Bryce Mitchell has been fighting and training, mm. we got to see what that matchup is going to do because Edson's looking like a motherfucker. We're going to learn man. some things. We're going to learn yeah. some things about Bryce Mitchell. I mean, I, it's one of those things like with Islam. Islam has gotten to the point that he's gotten to without us really seeing much of his game overall. Yeah, but that's kind of how things were with Khabib, except for the T Bow fight, like. Most people he just kind of wrestled out and put away, but mm-hmm. Islam seems to have more urgency to like actually finish people. So we see even Hasn't less. Has Islam been knocked out? He early on. Yeah, different. I mean, but yeah. like that can teach you some urgency. He's not <laughs> Superman. You yeah, know? I yeah. That's yeah, yeah, one yeah. of those things that he does have. Khabib does have over him is that yeah. air of invincibility. Yeah. But, um, but I think that even Khabib knew like his limits, and right. that's what made him so dangerous. Yeah. Where like Islam's thing is that like he learned early on. Oh, if I take that one well, Khabib second, Khabib played I, with that too. Oh, Khabib yeah. played around, and fucked around with that. He would get guys tired, and then he would want to strike with them a little bit. Like, yeah, you know, I think Justin Gaethje has a similar philosophy. Like, you know, I'm coming into this sport as a lifelong wrestler. Can I outstrike the best UFC MMA strikers in the world? No, I, I can't. I absolutely can't. But if I get them tired first. Then I can probably then hang with him, right? Him. Yep. Yeah, and I think that he's just applied a very similar outlook and strategy. We, we already talked about Hanato Moicano and RDA. Yeah. Um, so Colby Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. I got a lot to say about this shit. What do you got, Trev? Man, I I see it as like a toss up. Um, I see, like I can see cardio Colby pulling out like a dominant five round. That's decision. exactly what I see. Yeah, and and I really can. Um, I, I, it's going to be hard for Jorge to keep up with Colby's output. You I know, think, I, I feel Jorge, like Jorge got his window. He might be losing that window. This is Jorge's last big fight. Right. Me personally, would I like to see Jorge like find some punch kick range dominance? Yes. But Colby, as much of an asshole as he is, is more of a goddamn dog than people do give him credit for. Oh yeah, it's a super. If dog. you can still get punched by Kamaro and walk forward, After five dude, rounds, yeah. you're gonna walk. You're gonna walk into Jorge's punches. I mean, this guy has shared the cage for nearly an hour straight with the best guy in the world, if not the best guy pound for pound. I'll that say we've this: ever seen Colby's Colby's transition wasn't to MMA Masters wasn't the transition he needed for Kamaru. Mm-hmm. 
It's the transition he needed to beat Jorge. It's crazy that all three of these guys came out of like the same camp too. Just about. Just yeah, like, I mean, just they, about, they've, yeah. they've gone their separate ways since. Yeah. But, Things um, have diluted, but they all have roots in that same, that same camp. Same, same pool, yeah. But um, where was I just at with... Oh, I'm sorry. The, the move the MMA masters with Colby Covington. Yes. Serves him better to fight Jorge than it does Kamaru. Yeah. It is very hard to prepare for Trevor Whitman if you're not out of another world-class facility. MMA Masters, a great school, very scrappy. But when you see how they strike, it's almost more reminiscent of how Jorge Masvidal will strike as well, like that that blend of like boxing, taekwondo, Muay Thai for MMA. Right. Very think, similar. Uh, like they're gonna see. Like I think that those coaches can see very well where Colby needs to put himself in front of Jorge, if that makes sense. I don't think we see a lot of striking unless Colby decides he wants there to be striking. Oh, exactly. And that's where it's going to be like shut down at. We're going to see him looking for counters. Like Jorge's going to start out looking for kicks. I think that we uh, Jorge's best bet is to try and find feints. Try and, try and <coughs> find a shot that Colby hasn't seen before and try to feint Stop. off of it to Stop. find an opening, you know. Because I don't think Colby really gives a fuck about a person's faint game because he won't fight at that space long enough for there to be a faint. You yeah, know, like potentially, say, potentially I can see now his Colby's best shots a, are a kick faint to a punch. Colby's got an interesting interesting striking style in the sense that, like you said, there's a lot of volume, but it's almost like instead of fainting, he just throws like fake punches. Like well, uh, punches that not, just have zero not, so, so, so it, It's not a fake punch. It's very much a punch if you put yourself in front of it. Right, it, but it's at like one or it's a throw, one to ten percent. So it's, it's in it's a throwaway punch. Exactly. And in boxing, like, and this is something like I've reminded myself as a coach, like in Muay Thai, in kickboxing, in MMA, we can sometimes throw a punch away because that missed punch can create an opening for us to shoot under. It prevents that person to step inside of as well. So he's like, he puts these out because he's like this. You end up going. Well, fuck, technically, like, I can't punch there because he just punched there. I think... And, and it, it creates, like, these windows to make him work around. It allows him to shoot, manage that shoot and range. And it keeps people from going on the outside. It, keep, it keeps helps him moving. control that space where in boxing, you can't throw punches And away. I just don't think Jorge's going to be able to hang with that. Like, I, no, I, I yeah. have not seen anything from Jorge that leads me to believe he's some world class striker. We're going to see... I think the UFC... We're going to see Jorge get stuck fighting at the same tempo, round one through five, where we're going to see Colby... Ramp up from twenty five to thirty five. Probably to 45, have a hard time. Fifty five to eighty five percent. You'll probably have a hard time finishing. Him. Oh yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it it will be like Colby. You'll see Colby kind of like fighting um, uh, Robbie Lawler again, where he just slowly turned up like. Percent. He'll probably have sense. a hard time finishing. Him. Oh yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it it will be like Colby. You'll see Colby kind of like fighting. Um, uh, Robbie Lawler again, where he just slowly turned up. Like Robbie threw his best shit in the first two, and Colby was like, "Cool." Yeah, for Jorge to win, it's really got to be lightning in a bottle. Yeah, a second Col- time. Colby's smart, and he's gonna recognize like how a person fights. Like Robbie Lawler will fight the same way all five rounds. Jorge will fight the same way all five rounds. Mm-hmm. Colby is gonna fight the same way, but up the output. Right. Of it sloping, as it goes on. Sloping upwards. Sloping upwards, yeah. Constantly. Where Jorge's going to start at 50, and that 50 is going to help him win the first one or two, and then he's going to fall behind at that 50 and use that to hold on. I think the UFC is counting on this to be like a star-making or a star-building fight for whoever wins because Jorge's kind of dwindling now. Uh, however, at the and same point, like, who the fuck cares if either one of these guys fight Kamaru again? But Colby... They're both 0-2 to isn't the Isn't a star, yeah, I Colby's know. not a star. Yeah, like I think the UFC thinks he is one because he does well with a certain percentage of their demographic, but that doesn't make you a star. I had to turn to be off a star, watching the UFC embedded thing this morning when they had Colby giving the walkthrough. Because I'm like, God damn it, I cannot just hear. I just can't hear you talk, dude. To, to be a like, star, you have to get people who watch NASCAR to tune into MMA fights. That's what makes a star. If Jorge Masvidal shows doing, up to a NASCAR race, the place would go fucking. Nuts. The funny thing is, like, Jorge Masvidal. He does just as well with that right leaning base he as really Colby does, does yeah. if not better. They yeah. embrace him more, and it's like I don't think in a world where Trump's not president does the Colby Covington gimmick work anymore. Like, and and I think that that's starting to kind of be the case. Like, damn, this guy 
is still on the same shit, even though the he world the to, world has kind of moved on. He has to show up and show like he's there because he's a fighter. Of course he is. He, yes. Yeah, he's definitely and one however, of the best guys people, in the world. People see him as being there because he was pulling for Trump. You know, but like, the path yeah. the path is different. However, like no, that dude's fought some fucking animals on his way to. The I title think he could be the champion. He if Kamara he, if wasn't Kamara there, he would be the champion. He would be the champion, yeah. but he wouldn't. Put asses in seats, no, which is yeah. what he wants, and he which he like, wants. He would be like a, he would be like Demetrius Johnson when he had the titles, man. Like Nito, but like, huh. like for some reason, like, as, as great Demi- as great as he was, like no one wanted to watch him. Fight Part of the allure of Chael, and what makes Chael not only is he just naturally better at the gift of gab than Colby, and just naturally a better showman than Colby, but part of the allure is that Chael, Chael wasn't the best. You know, no, in, in yeah. the octagon, and it was like when you saw Chael actually win, it was but like, you, damn, but, you know. But, but if you didn't know fighting and you heard him talk, you'd think he is the best in the world. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and when you go five rounds with the greatest of all time, and then come up just this short, it's a lot different than going up against the greatest of your generation, which is Kamara, getting your jaw broken in the last minute, yeah, and and, yeah. and losing when you were kind of losing the whole fight. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where he, he doesn't have a style that makes stars, and he doesn't have a personality that makes a star like, anymore. Yeah, look, I think yeah. that I think that the athleticism from Colby is what enables him to have that kind. A of, lot of people sleep on that. Yeah, it's I, funny. I, I even Talia that. said she said, "Man, when I see that guy, it's like you're not supposed to be there." And I went, "Hold up," because he looks like he'd be complaining at a bar wearing like khaki shorts and boat shoes and on his dad's yacht. And she goes, "Fucking yes!" Exactly. And I'm like. And and he kind of is that guy. He would have been if he never if went into a wrestling. I feel like I feel well. Even wrestling, he is still kind of that guy. But like the dude is such a fucking dog. He's such a good fighter. At the same time, like people sleep on that white boy's athleticism. But he's like, also in real life apparently a great guy. That's what I've heard. A, yeah. Apparently in real life he's an actually great guy. I, yeah, and it, but I it's think like, that damn, he's, he's it kind sucks. of he's kind of done like the uh, Andrew Dice Clay where he's gone too much into that where he can't be anything but that. And I think. What's going to suck is people are going to like Colby after fighting more than they like him now. I think it's just one of those things. Like, Chael, Chael didn't get... I mean, Chael kind of is getting his flowers now for being an MMA personality. Brendan Schaub. Rather than... I like Brendan Schaub as the commentator and analyst more than, like, a... Bro, did person. you see where he well, told... Well, like, as a fighter. Did you see where he told Mike Tyson that he would lose to Tyson Fury to his face? He said it to Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson's on Food Truck Diary. So it's and funny. Shab was just like, oh no, you'd lose to this. Shab <laughs> is repaying the honesty that Joe Rogan put in him. Like, but I'll say this, man. There is one neat thing about Brendan Shab is that he will, but I mean, he's also not wrong. Mate, I don't think, I, I mean, I, I think it's stupid to talk about shit like that. I mean, I remember... Yeah. When I was really doing a boxing deep dive on everything, I saw that Mike Tyson go on to the Arsenio Hall show, to, and he was surprised by Muhammad Ali, and Arsenio put him on the spot and was like, if you guys fought, you know, what would happen? And Mike, being the fucking gentleman that he is, was just like, this guy right here is the greatest of all time, and I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah. Like, he was just like, you know, I'm good. This guy's the greatest of all time. Moving on. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't, I, I don't want to talk about what... Fighting would be like if we could see Kamara Usman fight GSP when GSP was in his prime. I don't give I a shit. Yeah. Like the, if there was an AI, like you remember the TV show Deadliest Warrior? Oh, remember the movie Rocky when they do the fucking Rocky versus <laughs> versus an AI? What's well, yeah, like talking about robot, that? Like yeah, <laughs> the computer simulation. Kind of gets um, nice the but if there was a, a Deadliest Warrior type AI that was yeah. real and not fake for a Spike TV show that could like calculate based on all these variables and stats. Who would win, or, or how many times out of a thousand one would win? I'd be the guy that would watch it a thousand times. Yeah, to see I'd like to. I'd be interested in that yeah. data, or I'd be interested in the simulation. Oh, I, I will put on a UFC game and make the computers fight to see who does shit, just to kind of like fuck around and make my brain think about like stuff that could happen in a fight. Like, no joke, it is kind of like the closest thing to some AI we have for fighting, where I'm like, the computer is actually going to read off of like these fighters do stuff. I'm kind of like, oh, that's one of the cool things I'll, about. I'll having... sit back and just get get red-eyed and watch this for the, a second. The UFC <laughs> games be completely motion-captured is is that the movements do look realistic to training. So I remember yeah. when I first started training, UFC 2 was out, and I saw something in, like, a grappling transition in UFC 2, and I remember, like, one day I was in Mount, 
and I just remembered that you could do that when you were mounted, and yeah. I just did it without taking like jiu jitsu. Like hallway, teaching, and I felt yeah. so fucking weird for doing it. I felt like ashamed almost that I did something from a game and, and that Max it worked. Max Holloway was using his character and learn new combinations for he's like, oh, I could totally punch that leg. <laughs> <laughs> like, he yeah. did that. Like, yeah. That's, I've, you know, the UFC games do get a little it. bit of flack, but they're, uh, it's cool that they are motion captured and kind of as close to reality as, as we can possibly get, but... Uh, yeah, guys. Not, I think that's a different rabbit hole for a different day. Of course, that's what I was about to say. Uh, uh, yeah, guys. Not much going on with the UFC, in my opinion, outside of Colby versus Jorge. I think Jorge loses this fight, and there's no more big fights for him after this, unless they want to do Diaz again, or unless they want to go to some hole in in the wall in California and he drag to, Nick out. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where it's like see Game Bread Fight Club becoming a bigger thing. No, uh, his promotion, I could see him doing Eagle FC because it's in Florida and he would get asses and seats. Oh, no, the UFC's never going to let him go. Oh, you know, yeah. No, the UFC will never let him go. The UFC will make him fight until they run him into the ground against, like, a 20-year-old guy when he's 45. Oh, and, yeah. You know, I mean, he's one of those guys that will probably fight until he's 45. But, yeah, he'll, he'll, the UFC will, because of what he's done for them in the past, his reward will be the fact that he will never be allowed to go fight anywhere else. 100%. Because he got big. But he yeah. didn't get big enough to say "fuck you." I'm going to His, go fight Floyd Mayweather. Like, he was like the new Nick Diaz. I feel. right. Like, he kind of for a like, very short amount of time. Minute. Yeah, and, and like he made his splash. But like it's a, like seeing Jorge fight, and he even talked about he did it to himself as long as he fought, like focusing his mindset. And like I think like what he's done is like he's really shown fighters how to like help redirect like their fight careers and stuff. But if he can win. Fuck. It doesn't do anything for the fucking division. It doesn't do anything yeah. for the division, but it does keep him around and keep his name elevated to where he can get more things that he wants. Yes. But I think that both of these guys are in lose-lose positions when it comes to if they win because nobody wants to see them fight Kamaru again, so who cares? Yes. So, anyway, uh, Conflict 50 this weekend, guys. Super if excited for that. And, hey, here's the great thing is we're just going to kind of like recap the UFC pay-per-view. Like, we're not going to watch it live. I'm going to have my ass's cage side for the best seat in the house, which is just live at any fight possible. So next week, on next week's podcast, we will be breaking down Conflict 50, giving you guys all the results, talking about the fight of the night, talking about the finishes of the night, but we will probably also be visiting upon the UFC card because, like we said, we will not be able to watch everything live, but we'll watch as much as we can in the recap and uh, discuss that on the next episode. So... Thank you guys so much. We are working on new things for the podcast. Uh, a new banner, a new logo, an official logo designed by Alex Pokey of Badger Honor. Thank you, Alex, for working with me on that. Uh, so, yeah, that means, you know, once the logo comes, T-shirts are next. So just stay tuned for much more news and much more episodes of the 10-8 Fightcast. All right, let me open my dog's knife.